Hello everyone, Achain over here, and I bring you the final installation of my Lightning Lethal Marriage build. Of course, I'm going to finish the build between today and tomorrow in Last Epoch Tools, and I will leave it in the description. Also, the planner it will already be up when I post this video, and I also will explain some things, because this chest that I have is not really the best chest, you really want Orzid Sprite, but let me show you first to get your attention a tier 4 jewel clip that I just killed. You can see here I have my Omnis ready and it's available, so you know that it's a tier 4 jewel also because she's kind of tanky. So let's roll it. I actually messed up the combo three times, so I was just nervous. It's the first time that I killed the tier 4 with this build, so Give me some <laughs> leeway. Okay, we have it there. She's dead. And as you can see, we have many mechanics that we play around with. I'm going to explain them and then do the items that you want, mods that you want, and everything like that. I'm also at the end going to explain more or less how you want to put the skills in your build and the rogue and blade dancer tree. That will be a little bit more because they are for the kind of build itself also how you're going to put the points the most important things will be now at the beginning and it's our gear and skills how we are going to skill our things also completely ignore this ballista this was a relic of past times when i still use it to get the lethal cadence up so it's not an important ability you can put a smoke bomb or decoy. This is like a free skill that you can use. You can even put an explosive trap and do some interesting things. Like on Orobis, you can preload them and then it, they will explode and give things. So, let's check the abilities first. Our main attack ability is going to be Lethal Mirage. But first... Let me get my Omnis back. And I got a shit mod. It is what it is. And now, of course, one really important thing is we actually don't need Omnis. I just got it because it filled all my resistances and it's a really comfy item to have. Our neck can be a perfectly fine critical multiplier or this that I have, elemental, lightning, Frailty, you really want shock or other things, but you can use perfectly a rare neck, a rare helmet, also rare gloves, because if you want to push in, you actually don't want to get extra damage taken, but fighting chance are really nice gloves to have, they have a lot of damage, and I got the three LP ones for kind of cheap, so I fused them. Now for Siphon of Anguish, you also don't need a 3 LP or 4 LP. Getting a 2-1, it's also not super hard. I have mana regeneration, health, I also had lightning regeneration and elemental resistance. In general, because I want Orsil Sprite of my real chest, but I messed up like 3 of them. And now I'm poor, I don't have money to buy more of them. Of course, if you are cough, getting a 3 LP, Kestrel or Orsil Sprite works. But without Ursin Sprite it's going to be really hard to get more of coded blades. We already kind of tap out on mana. As you can see here, if we put one or two more points, you still kind of do that. But it's not recommended. 
for lethal marriage. This is our point that we want to have because we have a relic that gives us plus four. This plus four is really important. The dancing strikes one is whatever. You can have critical multiplier or, or things there. R4 relics that we want to have, the unique ones, of course, the best one is going to be the Gambled of an Erased, erased Rogue. It gives plus one to all of our abilities. And Lethal Mirage has really, really good points. For example, I'm not using the physical damage point, of course, because we use Shocking Grasp. But remember, this only converts the base damage. This added damage is not converted. That's why the, our last point will come here in Ravage Mirage. As for other things, our boots are Bion's Chariot. They are really hard to get with LP, so just do like me and spam some arenas or buy them kind of cheap. I bought, I bought them because they had 40% more damage, but it's not a super rare drop itself. You have like 30 something percent chance to drop in from Bion. It's not difficult to get. All of my gear can be farmed somehow or another. My helmet, plus four to synchronize the strike, not needed at all. Because our points, last points in synchronize the strike are whatever, are actually area and a one extra point here in greater strikes. So with a plus two, it's okay. Of course, you can also get really good mods like extra shred and other things. I had, of course, percent health and health. And as you can see there, they are tier three and tier four. They are not hard to get. You can even get a cool sealed affix if you manage to get it. Of course, try to get it on a prefix. Same things with your gloves. You can use a cool cooldown reduction gloves or mana gloves. Same thing with your your boots until you get the bion's chariot now for our shattered chains one lp and try to get cooldown reduction cooldown reduction is really really good because shift and death and mirage get really good mileage of it and when you actually get your rules sprite and a lot of mana regeneration you can actually do the combo quite a, a lot of times as you can see here, I'm running out of mana, but you can just keep doing it all the time. Of course, I have to also talk about how the combo works and how we get our extra damage and hit huge numbers. Even if we mess up the combo somewhat, we have a lot of multipliers. Now, this is also a filler point, Umbral Braids, but they kind of help to get some bleed, shock, chill with this one the cold snap strike and they are an all-around good support same thing with dancing dancing strikes here we have an extra 60 percent chance um, damage to our lethal mirage we also get some critical multiplier some um percentage global damage and some more damage of course we only get one hit but that still gets some armor shred and armor shred stacks here. R4, our shift. We have, as you can see here, all of the power when we shift and use an, our ability. If you don't know what these do, this is extra more damage, extra more damage. Bleed, that actually doesn't work we have because we have this choking grasp, but it lets us cap all of our stacks of shock really easily we get the five stacks the 10 stacks of shock super fast now this of course doesn't work then always crit this goes through crit avoidance kind of to get really rid of crit avoidance you also need some crit vulnerability but it's not really important and unless you push super high corruption you are only going to get at most 40 percent now the flying points you, of course, will take out the mana here first, apart from all other things. So even if you don't have Kestrel or Omnis and you only have 20 on shift, it's okay. Now we talk about all of the abilities. I'm going to talk now about our Rogue 3. Our Rogue 3 
it's kind of something that goes around and comes around. Of course, as you can see here, we get lethal cadence, 100% increased damage, good. Dodge and parry, dodge, I'm gonna see blows. Here we get this point to be able to get lethal cadence. We love dexterity, we love health. Dodge rating, free poison resistance, helps a lot on get uh, other suffixes. Less damage, really good. That's why you saw me all the time moving. You get less damage when you move. It also works with Wings of Argentus, they are multiplicative. This agility is one of the uh, things that we will use on our combo. We get this haste and also increased damage per movement speed, the same mod as in Bios Child. So as you can see here, usually you have 53% move speed. Then if I get haste Somehow, I will get 30% extra, but just as we shift because of one ability, we get an extra 50%. That, of course, that means it's 100% extra damage. Then, of course, when we have more mana regeneration, you ideally would have it as at least on one ring, maybe on gloves, on the chest, you could get mana but it's not really good because it's a prefix and you really want to get or armor shred and less on edge or effect of armor shred or damage with daggers those all of them are really good mobs and you can get and here you get coated blades as much as you can sustain in one combo you see me here with two i could actually get to three but i will go to negative mana and then I will not be able to shift and dodge abilities for a little bit. That can be fatal many times. This point is also kind of good, but I'm not using it because I want to feel more here. Now, our floater points are on this one, on Pursuit. Until you get to 5. So we have two floater points there. And then every else is kind of needed, let's say. This is really good, Dexterity and Glancing Blows. This makes us get to 31% Glancing Blow. Dodge Shrouds and Health. One point to get the 200% Dodge to Glancing Blow. Eventually, if you get the right Blessings and some gear with it, you can actually cap the Dodge things. I'm going to talk about Blessings a little bit later. First, let me finish on this. Now, flow, this is of course filled because we want this 200% increased damage. This is only one point to be able to get to tempo. And then we don't use this because we actually can't bleed and we already always crit when we consume flow. And also it would mess up our lethal cadence things. And I actually was breaking my head a lot of the time trying to make it work with the five flow instead of four when I could just take it out and play without it. Now, of course, damage while we are on full health, really good. We are immune while we are using lethal mirage, so this and some leech from our Siphon of Anguish makes it, of course, you can also use a pot to get to full health, and this is 90% damage, a lot of damage per point. Same thing with perfection. We are immune while we are using lethal mirage, so if we get some stacks of perfection, we do a lot of extra damage. We get two stacks of perfection per hit. So you want to hit with your synchronized strikes and with your dancing strike. And then of course, armor shred, it's really good. You can actually drop these five points and get more damage, but I really want to get, um, I already got 80% frailty, so I might as well get that. And also I still don't have Ursula Sprite. So, that extra mana region is actually quite useful. Ideally, you would want like 30 or something like that mana re regeneration. And you will be able to, of course, ignore this point and get more survivability from the Falconry tree or other places. Now, as for Death's Door, one of the best points for the rogue makes it quite as uh, quite durable. You can also get some confidence 
you have when you have 10 stacks of perfection it's actually a lot of extra armor and dodge but it's not a huge point of course if we play with apostasy we don't play argent bay we already have leech from second of anguish these are floater points that you can get some extra damage with we don't want bleed because we already make um, bleed we don't want flat fees because we actually scale with lightning. Same thing here with bleed and poison. We don't care. We don't do damage with shadows. We don't care about this. Critical strike multiplier, really good. We don't care about our damage that is not critical strikes. And then the extra shadow to be able to have five shadows. Also here you get some critical vulnerability that you don't really care about that much, but it helps a little bit with the critical avoidance mod. And now we have five pawns in Falconer with more damage with haste and chance to gain haste. Now let's get to the last point of the normal things, blessings. This blessing is not important, neither is this, same here. Physical resistance, as you can see here, you can get physical resistance or other ones. I think this is like freeze or things like that. I put physical resistance because this way it's way easier to cap our resistances. Of course, we don't really care about endurance threshold, floors bite, chill. Armor could be really good if you already have the, the point here and also chill. If you don't have the frost blades thingy, it can all be also be interesting. We don't care about dots, so these are not important. And I don't really care that much about this either. All resistances, I think it's the best one from here. But you can also get the critical strike avoidance one if you already have all your resistances capped. Also, you can have the poison resistance. And where is the Minion or resistances, they also got here to shred physical on this one or the other one or here, necrotic resistance too. Poison damage you don't care. Physical damage you actually don't care because remember you are lining. This is the most important one that you should try and farm. Shred lining resistance, it's our only way to get shred and it's also quite good. You can see here, you shred 5% and it, attack, it stacks to 10 with our blades uh, running around and our ephemerage edge we stack it to 10 quite fast of course it's less important against bosses it's only 2% but it's still the strongest blessing apart from this one it's really good it helps me a lot to cap my resistances now let's talk about what we want to prioritize and how we are going to put our points i'm going to begin with the normal tree as you know you need to get to level 20 here in the rope tree to be able to get to the blade dancer tree of course lesser mirage is also not going to be available until we get quite far in the blade dancer tree so how we are going to actually level i leveled using flurry it's one of our basic abilities. It's really good. You can spam it and you get free mana from it. Of course, I, I went the adrenaline rush way. Me, I could just spam it and forget about everything. You can also do shurikens. They are also really good. You can just put the blade shield and just run around with it. Some people do puncture. You can just level with a bow and puncture. It's really easy and also really comfy. A lot of people have done really good guides on these things. I'm not going to focus on those. I just went flurry until I could get dancing strikes. And then I leveled with dancing strikes. Dancing strikes, as you can see here in my tree. It's a little bit different on how you want to level. You want to level, you are going to put four points in slicing and then get to dark blades after going to dark blades just going you are going to come here to cutting corners and then go upwards to shadow steps to get the extra shadow 
when you do attacks. Afterwards, you are going to get all of the global damage things and use a spam your dancing strikes while shifting out and in. Of course, when you get Umbral Blades, you are also going to level them and you are going to begin going instantly to Sword Thrower and use Ignore kind of while you level them. Then you are going to go to Umbral Remnant so they are on the ground. Afterwards, you can recall them to damage until you get to Cacophony of Steel. They make them a Blade Storm. It's a melee attack, kind of, that hits enemies. As you can see here, when we use, we get three maximum and they do damage in an area and they apply our things that we find important. Of course, Afterwards, you are going to come here, so they move and seek enemies and have more area. And the last points are going to go here to get the chill things. And the last five ones, or you could say three if you only have 20, will go here to get the chains and haste on recall. You can, of course, recall them if you want with the ability. Here. And then you recall them and you get some haste. It's quite cool. But I'm I don't really use it at all. So use whatever. Now let's go into the synchronized strike. Synchronized strike is something you are going to use quite often while you level. I recommend, of course, that you ignore all of these plays because it's only to get a killing threshold on mobs and first we are going to get one point here then two points here and then the dark allies so you get extra shadows for when marriages are important then you get two points in razor strikes and the three in crimson storm crimson shrouds if you don't know why they do they give you extra bleed chance and less damage taking from dots have maximum of three and it's really good because it's let lets you stack bleed really really easily of course there are some trap points like this one that makes your shadows expire you don't get that one we actually don't use attack speed so this is not that important either you can of course use it while you still level with flurry or puncture but it's not that good now for Lethal Mirage. First of all, you are going to get all of your Mirage online. So you are going to come here. This is the easiest one to get. You get this point and then this two. You would ignore Gloom and Doom. And get more Mirages from here. You could get from up here, but it's not recommended. Because remember, you are going to get Shocking Grasp. But while you level, this flat damage is better than this. Then you are going to get two points in here, two in here, and armor expands. While you level, I do recommend that you get the, um, the killing threshold and maybe even the shadow cascades and the extra shadow because they kind of help a little bit. Of course, if you get this killing threshold, don't get the sandering blows yet. And of course, you also want to get the penetration. It's one of the strongest things that the tree has, apart from the sundering blows. But if you can get bleed from anywhere else, you are going to get your mirages first. Really important. You are not going to care while you level that much about uh, eating shadows and getting extra damage per shadow because you will not have really the extra, the good mana regeneration that you have. Of course, if you are really savvy and equip two rings with my regeneration and also your gloves and you have like 16 it's enough to spam synchronize the strike or even get the chest mod for less mana you can before going up here get the shadow eater and umbral fist this is actually the node that gives the most damage because it's 40 percent more per shadow and you consume five shadow is 200 percent more damage 
This is 60% more damage. Also getting 20 blades on the target. It's really important. That's why we want this Crimson Shroud and these blades swirling. And that is everything for the abilities. Now, the combo itself and all the mechanics. I'm also going to do a flash video about that. But I'm going to put it here because I find it important. Now, we are going to have four parts to this combo. First of all, I'm just going to show really fast. You want to begin with zero lethal cannons. Also, ignore all of these things that just procced. I'm going to explain why. Lethal cannons makes it so you do 100% extra damage. It's a good percentage and it's not really hard to proc while you are on a boss. You don't need to care that much about afterwards. There are other things that are more important, but it's really good to have in mind. So we are going to begin with a synchronous strike and then ideally you wait a little bit and then do a dancing strike, shift, and then lastly your lethal merge. Why do we do that? It's because all of our abilities are movement ones and they proc Bion's Chariot and also Julra's Star Dial. You want ideally a Julra's Star Dial with extra lightning damage, like a half. If you don't have extra lightning damage, you could also use an Oceron or just a rare drink with cooldown reduction and stats and maybe put some lightning damage and elemental damage there or something like that. I was using the Seron before but it's a quite rare drop so I'm thinking I'm just going to drop it and not care that much about it. You can also use a font of the raised for a while until you get a good star dial but it drops a lot from Julra and you just keep slamming landing damage into it until it works that's it. this is for one lp for two lp you want of course elemental damage that will be the ideal thing but if you can get it on your photo pixels you want line resistance or all elemental resistance these are the four mods that we kind of want because they work with ursel sprite you can of course if you don't get those ones, don't worry, you can always try to get other resistances to cap your places. So these two help a lot of damage because this is tripling the increased lightning damage, giving us going from 300 to 500%, it's quite a, a big one. And then I'm going to show now the combo again, but well, we're going to synchronize strike, then wait a little bit and use dancing strikes why do we wait a little bit it's because of this part of the tree and also this one because you have four seconds this is not that important but this one only lasts two seconds so you will get this extra thing you also get some global bleed I, these ones are the first that you would drop from the extra points. They only affect the swirling blades and not many things. You also want, of course, the critical multiplayer and the more damage in general. So you're going to go. And if you do everything right, you should get all of your damage and also inside the Jewelras Star Dial place I'm going to do this again you really want to use the shift before the Bion's Chariot expires just before so you get the Bion's Chariot on your level mirage because otherwise it's going to happen like it happened to me in the in the clip where I use shift and then, in my case, I used actually Lethal Mage too soon, so it didn't get buffed from Bion's Chariot, so I lost a multiplier of 40% more damage. So, that is everything. Of course, it's quite a lengthy video, 
but I think it's worth it. I will of course do a written guide and everything will be in the description after I do it. It's going to be up most likely this weekend, no later. Have a nice day.